All right, so I'm going to give you a video. Watch video. Uh, it's just for fun. You don't have to take any notes or anything, but, but if you put a cylinder or a rod or a specimen in a tension, um, a tension test, right? An extensometer, yeah. Put it in an extensometer and the equipment will just pull it apart, right? So it's gonna give it some normal force, which causes normal strain. And so they can measure the amount of force they're giving it and then calculate the amount of stress they're giving it. But then they can also measure the amount of strain, how, how much it's elongating. And then we can plot, they can plot the uh, strain and the stress, stress versus strain. And so no two diagrams are exactly the same, but you can do hundreds of tests on a certain type of steel and make out its, its average stress strain diagram. And if you know, if, if I can plot the stress strain diagram, I'm not going to, so let's say it's, it's something like this. Maybe I know uh, for, for this certain type of material, this is its stress strain diagram, then what does that mean? That means if I tell you the stress, well, then you can read off of its stress strain diagram and tell me the strain. Or maybe, maybe you know the strain. Hey, I know that it stretched by three millimeters and originally it was, you know, a thousand millimeters. So maybe you know the strain down here, you can read off, and I expect you to be able to read some graphs and calculate and interpolate by doing that in a thermodynamics. We'll, we'll talk about that, interpolate and calculate the stress, right? So this is a really helpful to know the stress strain uh, diagram for a certain material, okay? And copper is different from steel. You know, they're, they're all different. But if we, if we can look up or if we are given the stress strain diagram, then if you tell me strain, I can tell you stress. Or if you tell me stress, 